Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I will show you how you can make this super cute lacy top with flower granny squares. It's quite easy and simple to make, plus I'm making sure that I'm explaining every step in as much detail as possible, so even beginners would be able to try and make it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So here are all the materials that I'm going to use within this project. You will need three different colors of cotton yarn, which is four ply. And here I'm also showing some more measurements just in case if you need it. Besides that, you of course will also need a crochet hook. Here I'm using three millimeter hook and you will also need scissors. And here is the final granny square, which I'm going to start with uh, teaching you first for this project. And in terms of yarn volumes for each color, for purple color I used around 150 grams, for white color I used approximately 30 grams, and for the light green I used 10 to 20 grams of yarn. But now let's jump into making the flower granny square. I have a separate video on my YouTube channel where I'm going in in a lot more detail on how to make this square. So within this video, I will just give you an overall explanation on how to do it and each step within the process. So first you would have to start by making a magic ring and uh, this is the process how I do it. So pull through the yarn over one of the loops and then chain three. Chain three in this case is going to count as our first uh, double crochet. And this is how our magic ring and chain of three looks like. Once that's done, we can proceed further with the next step, which in this case is to add 15 double crochets into the magic ring. So to make a double crochet, you basically have to yarn over, then go through the ring, pull up some yarn and then yarn over and go through two and then yarn over and go through two again. So this is how the double crochet looks like. And then just repeat the process until you have 15 double crochets in total, plus the chain of three that we did in the very beginning. So here I have finalized all of the double crochets. So we have chain of three and 15 in total. And now we can close it by pulling the loose piece of yarn that we have. And as you can see, it is establishing kind of a perfect circle. And now we can just connect it by doing a slip stitch. So just going through the third chain from the very beginning, grabbing some yarn and pulling it through the loop, and then also pulling it through the loop that we already have on our hook. And now we can finalize this round by chaining one and then cutting off the yarn. And first we have to make the loop a little bit looser, but yeah, then just grabbing our scissors and cutting it off and then we can tighten it in a secure knot. And if you want to make this round even tighter, you can just tighten it by pulling the loose piece of yarn and it will automatically make it tighter. Now we can proceed with the next round and for that we first have to attach the yarn and for this we are going to use white color. And to attach the yarn I'm also going through the back loops here as you can see and then just grabbing the yarn and tightening it in a secure knot. Once that's done we can proceed with the next step and first we have to pull up a loop uh, through the back loop that we attach the yarn to and then we can start by chaining 6. Once we have six chains, we are going to hold our uh, finger at the sixth one and then we just have to add two more, which is basically going to count as one of the double crochets that we will do, like that. And then we can start doing double crochets all the way back, starting from the sixth chain we are, where we are holding our finger at. And then we can just start doing double crochets all the way back until we have done six of them. So this is how it looks when we have done all six of them and this is going to count as one of our uh, leaves for the flower. So now we just have to attach it to the first round that we did. And to do that we will be using a slip stitch. So first we are going to do a slip stitch in the following back loop that we have from our first round and then we will do another slip stitch in the next uh, stitch so we can start to work on the other flower leaf. Mm -hmm. 
and now we can continue working with the next flower leaf so again we just have to chain six and then we have to hold our finger at the last uh, sixth chain and then adding two more chains as a way to turn back and then we can start doing double crochets from the chain where we hold our finger at to do six double crochets in total and once that's done we again just have to attach it by doing uh, two slip stitches one in the following stitch and then right after another one in, in the next one so here we have completed two of them and then basically just repeat this process until you have created eight leaves in total and I will meet you then. So here I have done all eight of them. So now we just have to attach the last one again by doing a slip stitch and then attaching uh, the yarn to the first uh, stitch or first place where we started from the very beginning. And then once that's done, we just have to chain one, make the loop looser and cut off the yarn again so we can finalize this round. And this is how our flower looks once it's finalized. And within this step, you can also start to weave in loose ends just so it's easier to do it now instead of everything at once. Now we can start working on the final third round and first we have to attach the color. So I'm going to do it at the top of one of the flower leaves and just pulling the yarn through and tightening it in a secure knot. Then just grabbing my crochet hook and pulling through a loop and then chaining one. This chain of one is going to count as a single crochet and then we can proceed further with the next step which is to chain five. Then the following step is to do uh, two treble crochets. One of them is going to go through the third back loop on this side of the flower leaf. And then another one is going to go right after on the other side of the next flower leaf. Also in the third back loop from that leaf. And to do a treble crochet, it is very similar from double crochet. The only difference is that you have to yarn over twice in the very beginning. And this is how one treble crochet looks like. So right after that, we are putting another one on the next leaf. So yarning over twice and going through the third back loop from that flower leaf. And then pulling up some yarn and doing a treble crochet there. And once that's done, the next step again is to chain five and then we are going to proceed with making the corner. At the moment, we are just completing one half of the side. So now chaining five. And once we have that, we can go through the top of the following leaf and doing a treble crochet in there. Like this. And now we just have to finalize the corner or establish the corner shape. And to do that, we have to chain nine. Like this, here we have our chain of nine. And now we just have to complete the corner. So we will be doing another treble crochet into the same space where we did the previous one. So going through the same stitch uh, where we already have one and completing a treble crochet in there. As you can see, this has helped us to create a complete uh, corner for this uh, side. And now we can just proceed with the following side. So first we have to chain five and then we are doing two treble crochets, one on one side in the third uh, back loop and then another one on the other side. So here we have made two of them right after each other and then again next step is to chain five and after that we are at the top or in the middle of this side of the square so at the top of this flower leaf we will be doing one single crochet like this 
and now we just have to duplicate all of these stitches also on the other side so first we will be starting by doing uh, five chains and then again we have to do two treble crochets one in the third back loop of this side of the flower leaf and then another one on the other one and once we have done that then again we have to chain five and then again we have to do the corner bit so doing a treble crochet at the top of uh, this flower leaf and then chaining nine and once we have chain of nine again doing another treble crochet into the same space and this will help us uh, with creating the another corner so as you can see we have completed one of the sides and now basically what we have to do is duplicate all of these stitches or repeat them on every single side until we have created a final uh, square shape and here i am at the very end so the last uh, step is to basically do two treble crochets again like this and then we just have to chain five and then just have to go through the first uh, stitch that we did in the very beginning and to do a slip stitch there and once we have done slip stitch we just have to finalize this round by chaining one and then cutting off the yarn and tightening it like this and this is how our final square looks like in total it is approximately 10 to 12 centimeters depending on in what spot exactly you are measuring it and also it very much depends if you have stretched it out or not because it's very lacy and therefore very flexible now that we have made our first flower square we can look into the pattern for front and back panels which will be using these flower squares so for the size small that I'm making, in total I will need 32 flowers, which will be 4x4 four four for each panel. So 16 flowers for front panel and 16 flowers for the back panel. It's up to you how you want to proceed with creating the flower squares. You can easily just do all of them and connect them afterwards, but I would suggest to connect them as you go. So this is the method that I'm going to teach you in this tutorial. So here I have started to work on the third round for a new square and as you can see I have reached uh, the first corner that I have to complete. And instead of just doing this round on its own, I will be connecting it together with the square that I have already finished. So as you know, uh, normally for the corner bit we have to do 9 chains in total, but in this instance I will be doing 4 chains and then on the 5th chain I will be connecting it together with the other corner bit. So now I'm just grabbing the other corner and then going through the corner that we have, uh, which is basically the same part of the corner that I'm working on. And instead of doing fifth chain, I will be doing a single crochet as the fifth uh, chain for that. And as you can see, in this way, we are connecting them all together, corner to corner. And now we just have to finalize this corner by doing extra four chains like that. And once that's done, we can finish it by doing a treble crochet. And as you know, this treble crochet has to go into the same space where we did the previous one. Like this. So now we have connected it together. And then the next step normally would be to do a chain of five. But in this case, we are going to chain two. And then on the third chain, we are going to connect it with the other square by doing a single crochet inside this space so we can connect them together like this. So this is our uh, third stitch basically. And then we just have two left. So we are chaining two again like that. And then it's the same uh, step basically, we have to do two treble crochets, one on this side of the flower in the third space and then another one on the other flower leaf, like that. So as you can see we are slowly starting to connect them together as well as we are completing the third round for the other flower that we just started. And then again, our next step would be to chain five, but we are doing two. And then on the third chain, we are doing a single crochet to connect it together with the other square. And then we have two chains left 
and we are switching back to our existing square and doing a single crochet at the top of it. And this is how far we have got. And again, instead of chain of five, we are doing two chains. And then on the third one, we are again doing a single crochet to connect together with the other square. And again, chaining two and switching back to the other one. So now we have to do two treble crochets, one on this side of the leaf and then another one on the other side. And then again chaining five, uh, but doing two chains and the third is a single crochet to connect with the other side and then chaining two again. And then we have reached the corner, so doing a treble crochet in there. And then to finalize the corner, we would have to do chain of nine, uh, but we would be connecting it together with the other corner on the fifth chain where we would do a single crochet. So here I have connected together multiple squares uh, in a row, but it's up to you how you want to connect them. And if I wanted to add another square uh, and connect it together within this round, I would just have to make sure that I'm going through the corner from uh, both of the squares that I already have and uh, placing the fifth chain or single crochet through all of these to make sure that they are connected properly. So here I have connected together three squares already and uh, as a next step, I could easily place another one here where two of the sides would be shared and just connect them as I go. And here I'm just showing again how you could connect uh, this square. As you can see, I have reached the corner bit and here basically I just have to do a single crochet uh, through all of these three corner pieces that I have already connected. So just going through in the middle to make sure that everything is uh, connected together and then proceeding with finalizing and connecting the remaining side of this part. And here you can just see the process of how I'm progressing. So I basically chose to first do all the flowers and then I started to connect them into the panel as I went throughout the third round for all of them. I found it much easier and here you can see also the progress on how I was getting on. So I chose to lay out all the flowers that I had created on the floor because that kind of helped me to keep track on where I am and what needs to be connected and uh, how many are left basically. And here you can see I basically just tried to connect one by one by going into the corner places where two of the sides were shared. So here I have completed already one panel so it's just one more left to do. And here you can see me in the process. To be honest, I find this way of connecting squares much easier and much quicker because everything is already connected as I'm doing the third round and I don't have to worry about connecting them afterwards. So I'm kind of also saving time. And here you can see both of the panels finalized and this is how they look. As you can notice, they are quite stretchy just because of the laces and all the chains that we have done. So just keep that in mind in case you're trying to figure out the size that you would have to create for your panels. And also a small note on how to weave in the loose ends, if you didn't already, I basically just weave them in throughout the chains on each of the sides. And I also felt that that's kind of a good way to hide them and they are not that visible. Now that we have finished making our front and back panels, we can proceed with creating the arm panels. And for that we will also need two of them in total, one for each arm. For arms, I chose to do this diamond mesh stitch because I feel like it very well goes together with our square pattern and it kind of matches the style that we are creating overall. I'm also going to use this purple color and the first step for us would be to do a slip knot and then we will have to do some chains. To figure out how many chains will be needed, you basically have to do multiples of five and then adding additional chain at the very end. Also keep in mind that the amount of chains will determine how wide your arm panels will be or how wide your arms will be. So just make sure to keep that in mind and measure how many are needed for your size. 
For my top, I was going for a wide arm look and therefore I did 86 chains in total. So 85 is the multiples of 5 and then one additional one at the end. So in total, it was 86 for me. And here I have done all of them. Once we have done all of them, we can basically start working on the first round. And the first step that we have to do is to basically skip one and then in the following chain we will have to do one single crochet. Once that's done, the next step is to chain seven. So here I have done seven chains and then we basically have to skip four chains at the bottom. And then in the fifth one we are going to do one single crochet to connect them together. Once we have done that, then again we have to chain 7. And after that, again we have to skip 4 chains at the bottom and in the 5th one we are doing single crochet. So this is how it looks. And then we are basically just repeating the same pattern until we reach the end. So chaining seven, then skipping four and in the fifth one doing single crochet. So here I am at the very end and doing the final single crochet at the very last stitch. And once we have done that, we have finalized the first row. To proceed with the second row, we first have to chain 7. And then we can turn our work around and we have to connect this bit with the big hole that we have here. So in there we will be doing one single crochet. Like that. So that is going to be as half of the big hole and also will count as, as the side of this row. After that, we can proceed with repeating the same pattern. So chaining seven and doing a single crochet in the big gap from the previous row. So here we have reached the end of the second row and now we just have to finalize it. So instead of doing seven chains, we will have to do three of them. And then after that, we would have to do double crochet on top of the single crochet that we have there. So going through the single crochet and doing a double crochet. So this will create a, a nice side of this row, like that. And then to start working on the third row, we basically have to chain one, then we can flip our work and on the other side, and then we just have to do a single crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous row. And then we can continue with the third row. So again, we are repeating pretty much as we did before. So we are chaining seven and then doing a single crochet in the gap from the previous row in here. And then again, just repeating the same thing throughout this row. So just chain seven and do single crochet in the gap from the previous row. Here we are at the end of the third row and we are ending it with a chain of seven. And to connect this row with the previous one, we have to place a single crochet in the fourth chain from the previous row. So as you can see here, I'm counting the fourth chain and that's basically the middle of the seven chains that we have. And when placing a single crochet in there, we will establish a nice edge of this side. So from now on, it's going to be very repetitive. You basically just have to repeat rows uh, two and three. And in that way, you can build up the volume and build the length of our arm panels. Also a small tip that one row will always end with chain of seven, while the other one will always end with the double crochet. So just keep that in mind. So here I have already done quite a few rows and just working on building up volume for my sleeves. And here I have completed one of them. As you're working on them, just make sure to measure that the length fits your actual arms and that they are not going to be too short or too long. 
Here I have finished both of the arm panels, so now we can proceed with connecting all panels together. Here I have laid all of the panels on the floor to show you how the final product is going to look like, but now let's proceed with connecting them. So here you can see me opening all of the panels to show where are going to be the connection points. So for the front and back panel, we will have to connect the shoulder parts and we will have to leave some space for the neck. And then on the sides, we will have to connect the arm panels. I will first be starting with the shoulder parts and it's basically up to you how you want to connect them. You can either use slip stitch or darning needle or any other method that you prefer. But just keep in mind to kind of make sure that connection part is not standing out and that it's aligned with the pattern. So here you can see how I have connected them and it kind of very well goes together. So the method that I was using is very much similar with our pattern, which is basically a lot of chains and single crochets. So here I'm going to show you how I did it. First of all, you have to make sure that panels are turned inside out to make sure that all the ugly bits are hidden inside. Then I basically did a slip knot and put the loop on the hook. And then we just have to attach it by uh, chaining one and doing a single crochet and the method that I'm using is kind of uh, a lot of chains. So first I did three uh, chains and then I connected it with the other corner by doing a single crochet. Then I did another three chains and went back to the previous uh, panel where I connected it with a single crochet again. Like this. And then again going back to the other panel by chaining three and connecting it with uh, another single crochet. And once that's connected, again chaining three and going back to the previous panel. So doing this zigzag method, which kind of creates a very lacy connection between both panels. And this is the method that I use throughout the whole pattern when connecting all of the panels. So here you can see shoulder parts being connected. It looks super smooth and super lacy. You cannot really even notice it. And I have also connected it on the other side. And of course, we also have some space for the neck part. So this is our progress so far. So the next step is to connect arm panels to the sides of the front and back panels and I'm doing it while the front and back panels are inside out. Also make sure that you are attaching these panels in the very middle of both of the front and back panels to make sure that the arm is in the correct space and that we will be connecting everything smoothly as it's supposed to be. So as you can see I'm placing some uh, uh, markers in the middle of uh, front and back panels and the arm panel is going to take me approximately four two flowers and I have also attached additional marker in the very middle of the arm panel to make sure I know where is the middle of this panel. Also a small note here that the part that I'm connecting here with the with all of the panels is the part with all the chains because it's less stretchy and then it's just easier to do some adjustments in case your arm panel is too long or too short then you can make sure to make it uh, easier to make it longer or to shorten it by removing some of the rows that we did. And here you can see my progress so far, so I just continued doing the same thing until the very end. And I also did the same method as I did for the front and back panels for the shoulder parts. Then we can proceed with connecting the other arm and for that again I placed some uh, markers to make sure that I'm connecting the panel in the right spots and that it's connected evenly throughout the front and back panel. And here I have finished both of the arms and as you can see the connection is very smooth and very neat. So now we can proceed with connecting the rest of the bits that are needed, which in this case are the bottom of the arms as well as sides of the front and back panels. So here I'm just aligning everything as neatly as possible while everything is turned inside out. And then again proceeding with connecting these panels with the same method as I showed you before. 
and of course I had to do it on both sides. So this is our final product and this is how it looks on me. I'm super happy with the final version and how it all came together. I think this pattern is incredibly cute and I'm just so so happy. And I also really like how all the mesh and lacy bits come together with all the flowers. And I also feel like this color combination is super cute and I just can't wait for the summer to be here. I hope you also enjoyed this video and I hope that this tutorial is going to be useful for you in case you are looking to create a similar project and in case if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section, I will try to help you from there and if you did enjoy this video please give me a big thumbs up and if you're new here please subscribe and I will see you later, bye!